hello today we'll be looking at the poem summer's end by rosemary dobson this poem marks the end to dobson's poetry collection in a convex mirror and if you watch the video on young girl at a window you will know that young girl was also part of the inner convex mirror poetry collection something that is a little different about this poem is that it is divided into two parts which we will get to as we discuss the poem together and some key links to human experience that you might consider are maturity, childhood, loss, and nostalgia. As per usual, pause the video and read both parts of the poem. Because I don't want the video to be too long though, today I'll unpack the macro techniques and the first part titled After the Summer Season, and then we'll have a look at Picnic in another video. Let's start by looking at the bigger macro techniques of the poem together. Firstly, make note of how it is written in a free verse, this means that it does not have a regular rhyme or meter. We could also consider the enjambments that add to the continuity that is created from the poems written in only one stanza. So as you can see, the poems are written in one stanza. And we have examples of enjambments here. We could also think about the irregular line lengths. So in the first poem, we can see how these short lines it kind of reflects the movements of the waves coming in and out so here it reflects movement of waves and in the second poem so we have like a short line there and basically, for the second poem, I think we could talk about how it reflects the fragmented thought process of the persona, or like the fragmented thoughts of the persona, as she goes in and out of the past. Essentially, the persona is oscillating between the past and the present. The next macro or big technique that you could think about is the use of diptych structure. So diptych structure is basically where there are two parts or two panels to the poem. And the significance of this form may be that it provides insight into two different perspectives. So I'll write that here for you. So considering this in light of the next one, which is seasonal symbolism, you could kind of think about how summer here, it represents youth and it has figuratively ended. And stanza two, it becomes to be set in autumn. In the second stanza, the persona reflects upon the nostalgic memories of childhood. And thereby, what we can see here is that the diptych structure grants us insight into the perspective of a persona who is in a different stage in her life. The final one is cyclicality, and this one we'll touch on when we go through picnic in a little bit more detail. Now let's unpack the poem one by one. Now, after the summer season initially captures the joy of childhood innocence, but proceeds to deal with the idea of departing or having to move on. So I'll write that down for you. So this idea of joy to this idea of departing. So such an experience is not marked by a sense of excitement for what the future holds, but it kind of captures the loss of innocence and childhood to be, by, to be marked by reluctance and emotional tension. So when you are departing into a new stage into your life, it's not like, oh my god, I'm so excited to become older, but it could be marked by reluctance and emotional tension. That's something that you might want to keep in mind of. Now, Let's start from the top. Again, we should consider the seasonal symbolism of summer and how that is connotative of this idea of youth. So it's representative of the sense of joy and excitement. And what you could sort of think about is how this is juxtaposed to the first wave of winter here. So winter is a little bit different in connotation. So winter is not connotative of fun and youthfulness, but it's rather one of coldness and barrenness. And that is what I mean by this idea of reluctance. 
and emotional tension. In following the departure into a new stage into your life. The next one that we could consider is the naturalistic reference at the beginning. So in this entire section, we kind of have like a lot of naturalistic references. And what you could sort of think about here would be that the passage of time and like how we lose our innocence to the passage of time is one that remains inevitable. It is a natural part of the human life. I'll write that for you here. So naturalistic references you could also consider the diction of miraculous here so the miraculous cleansing waters i've written down here for you that it's a biblical allusion so it's a biblical allusion to the ritual of baptism and baptism it essentially goes back to the idea of purity and regeneration So essentially, that's adding on to the idea of new beginnings that are marked figuratively by the end of summer. Another thing that you might want to consider is that in this section, the imagery, it remains very relevant to the Australian culture, as I've written here. So we have like references to like the sun hats, the surfboards, the sunshades, all of that they remain very relevant to the Australian culture and landscape, and it's making close reference to the Australian backdrop. So make note of also how there is the repeated use of S sounds here in these references. So essentially, I want you to consider the alliterative S sound throughout the section. Now, up to this section, everything was very like naturalistic, very joyful, exciting, and whatnot. But then we have like the imagery of the indolence sleepers on the sand here and i think what you could make note of here is the imagery is one that is associated with perhaps death so the diction of indolent it captures this idea of laziness and the lack of movement which is kind of in contrast to the vitality of the children screaming at the water's edge in the previous line and then moving on, we have a reference to the idea of travel. So in the lexical chain, for example, of tramline, bus, departure, roadway, we kind of see this idea of going somewhere. And we also have the polis and litten here in confusion and the foam and the splash of departure. And I want you to make note of how confusion and the foam and the splash of departure is being rebuffed. So the diction of rebuffed here. So the diction of re rebuff in this particular situation, it implies a sense of rejection. This possibly captures the idea of the inevitability of the loss of youth and childhood innocence. It's not necessarily a choice for you to embark on a new journey into adulthood, but rather you get subject to it under the passage of time. So I'll write that down here for you. So... Um, another really big thing that I might want you to consider is the whole thing about how as we go down to the end of the poem, there is a lot more reference to the idea of neglect and or abandonment. So you could consider how the indented short lines that I've written here for you, they, it, they add to the disjointed nature of the poem. And you could also consider how the personification of like the waves receding, and like, you know, sighing, hushing the houses and whatnot, they all add to the solemnness of the atmosphere. And you need to make note of how this part of the poem is in stark contrast to the joy and excitement that pervaded the very beginning section of this poem. And another thing that you could consider is like the idea of the waves receding that's capturing this idea of reluctance as well. And here I'm talking about this imagery of abandonment and neglect where we have like the flies and the shuttered rooms that create a sense of claustrophobia and then like the diction of abandon again going back to the whole concept of neglect. The 
final allusion to the mermaid here is coupled with the diction of lonely as well. And I think this section might also be one of the most important parts that you could refer to in analyzing this poem. The W sound that marks the beginning of each line is important. And the setting of evening and being in the moonlight also adds to this melancholy nature of the mermaid who's weeping at the edge of the water. And I want you to just make note of how there is like an abundance of W sound in the second line of this section as well. The ending simile of the sand being like knives to her feet also captures the transition of youth to adulthood as one that is not easy and one that is emotionally challenging. So that is it for this section of the poem. If you have the chance to identify the top, let's say, three to four quotes in the poem, and then have a go at writing analyses that link back to the concept of the human experience. Then I'll see you in the next video to unpack Picnic.